Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using slope deflection method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span BC and span CD. Also, there are two overhanging spans. On the left side, we have a overhanging span AB. On the right side, we have a overhanging span DE. So, we have overhanging on both of the sides. In the overhanging AB, we have a point load 30 kN in the point A. In the span BC, there is a point load 20 kN acting in the center. In the span CD, there is UDL 12 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the overhanging span DE, we have UDL 12 kN per meter. In this analysis, we have to find totally 6 moments. In the joint B, we have to find MBA and MBC. In the joint C, we have to find MCB and MCD. And finally, in the joint D, we have to find MDC and MDE. So, totally we have to find 6 moments. Also, we have to calculate 3 reactions RB, RC and RD. In the joint B, we can easily calculate the moments MBA and MBC because there is overhanging on the left of B. To calculate MBA, we have to multiply this load with the overhanging distance. When we do that, we are getting 60 kN meter. MBA should be positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction. MBA and MBC will have the same values, but the sign only will be different. MBA should be positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction. MBC should be negative because it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. But both of the values will be same. In this concept, we can calculate MBC. Just we have to change the sign of MBA. So for MBC, we are getting minus 60 kN meter. In the same way, we can calculate the moments MDC and MDE in the joint D. To calculate MDE, we have to multiply the UDL with the overhanging distance and a distance by 2. We know that when the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance upon 2 to find the moment. Here we have to be very careful. MDE is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So, we have to apply the load with the negative sign. That is why we are getting a negative moment. The values of MDC and MDE will be same, but they will have the different signs. MDE is negative because it is acting in the anticlockwise direction. MDC should be positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction. But both of them will be having the same values. In this concept, we can calculate MDC. We have to just change the sign of MDE. When we do that, we are getting MDC as 54 kN meter. In the slope deflection method, we have to check the number of supports in which slope can occur. Let us see the conditions. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. In the hinged support, there will be slope. In the roller support also, there will be slope. In this beam, in the points B and D, there are hinged supports. In the point C, there is a roller support. So, the number of supports in which slope can occur is 3. In the point B, there is theta B. In the point C, there is theta C. And in the point D, there is theta D. So, in this analysis, there are three unknowns. If we calculate these three unknowns, we can easily find the final moments. 
to calculate these three unknowns we need three equilibrium equations we have already calculated the value of mbc that is the first equilibrium equation in the joint c when we add the moments mcb and mcd it will be zero this is our second equilibrium equation in the joint d we have already calculated mdc that is the third equilibrium equation now let us make the fixed end moments no need to make the fixed end moments in the overhanging spans only we have to calculate the fixed end moments in the spans bc and cd let us calculate the fixed end moments in the span bc in the span bc there is a point load 20 kN it is acting in the center the formulas to calculate the fixed end moments are minus wl upon 8 and positive wl upon 8 let us apply the values inside the formulas w is 20 l is 4 when we apply the values, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now, let us make the fixed end moments in the span CD. In the span CD, there is UDL, 12 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. The formulas to calculate the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Let us apply the values inside the formulas. W is 12, L is 4. After applying, we are getting M of CD and M of DC. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations. First, let us make the equations in the span BC. Let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of BC is 4 meter. Let us apply that. In this equation, we can make the first equilibrium equation. We know that MBC is minus 60. Let us apply that. Then let us take minus 10 on the left side. So it will become positive. Finally, we are making the first equilibrium equation. Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the span CD. In the equations, let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of CD is 4. Let us apply that also. In this equation, we can make one equilibrium equation. We know that MDC is 54. Instead of MDC, let us apply 54. Then let us take this 16 on the left side. It will become negative. Finally, we are making the second equilibrium equation. We have made two equilibrium equations, but we need three. The third equilibrium equation can be made in the joint C. In the joint C, MCB plus MCD will be zero. We have made the slope deflection equations for MCB and MCD already. Let us apply them. Finally, we are making the third equilibrium equation. Let us keep this equation as number 5. Now, we can solve the equations 1, 4 and 5. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the answers. If you do not know how to solve three equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and getting the final answers. Now let us apply the values of Ea theta b and Ea theta c in the equation number 2. In this way we are getting MCB. Then let us apply the values of Ea theta c and Ea theta d in the equation number 3. When we do that we are getting MCD. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. For MCB, we got a negative value. That means MCB is acting in the anticlockwise direction.
for MCD, we got a positive value that means it is acting in the clockwise direction. Initially, we assumed that MCB would be acting in the clockwise direction and MCD would be acting in the anticlockwise direction, but our assumption is wrong. MCB is acting in the anticlockwise direction and MCD is acting in the clockwise direction. Now, let us calculate the vertical reactions. Let us take the overhanging span AB and the span BC together and calculate the vertical reactions. When we take them together, no need to consider MBA and MBC. They will get eliminated. Only we have to consider MCB which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. In these spans, first I am going to calculate RB. For that, I am going to take moment about C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The point load 30 kN is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 6 meter. So, minus 30 into 6, RB is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So, it will be positive and the distance is 4. So, for RB, the point load 20 kN is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction. So, it will be negative and the distance is 2 meter. So, 20 into 2. Finally, there is a moment which is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. After the calculations, we are getting Rb, which is equal to 57.25 kN. Now, let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and calculate Rc1. For Rc1, we will get a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that RC1 is acting upwards, but actually it is acting downwards. Now let us take the spans CD and the overhanging span DE together and calculate the vertical reactions. When we take them together, no need to consider MDC and MDE. They will get eliminated. Only we have to consider MCD which is acting in the clockwise direction. In these spans, first I am going to calculate RC2. For that I am going to take moment about D. RC2 is acting towards the point D in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter. So for RC2, then we have to take the UDL. We have to split the UDL into two parts. First in the span CD, then in the overhanging DE. In the span CD, it is acting towards the point D in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply the load with the distance and distance upon 2. Now let us take the UDL. In the overhanging DE, it is acting towards the point D in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 3. So 12 into 3 into 3 upon 2. Then we have a moment which is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. Finally, we are getting RC2 which is equal to 8.25 kN. Then let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0. Using the rule let us calculate rd which is equal to 75.75 kN. Now let us add rc1 and rc2. After adding we are getting rc. Now I am going to calculate the shear force values. I am going to start from the point A and move towards the point E. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. 
Using that, we can calculate the shear force values. Using the values, we can make the shear force diagram. Now, let us make the free moment diagram. Now, let us make the end moment diagram. Using the direction of the moments, we have to make the end moment diagram. If the end moment diagram comes above this line, that will be negative. If it comes below the line, that will be positive. So here it is negative and here it is positive. Now let us combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram so that we are getting the bending moment diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.